Warning: Me time and murder is intended for mature audiences. Listener discretion is advised. <laughs> oh, for God's sake! Here Dancing goes. around him, reciting poetry. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> oh my God! That's crazy. No. Why? <laughs> Oh, well, big surprise. Oh, God. <laughs> Dead on the bathroom floor. <gasps> Did it? It's okay. Oh. <sighs> Tres, what are you drinking? Today, I'm drinking the Pucka 3 Mint Organic. What are you drinking, Marianne? I am drinking Marks and Spencer's Blackberry and Elderflower Tea. What about your me time? I am going to put on some L'Oreal oh I said that really funny L'Oreal LV's Dream Lens long hair mask um it's been a while since oh. I've used this I keep forgetting about it but it does make a difference what about you what are you putting on your body uh on my face I've just got the little Sephora aloe vera uh face mask Trez today we are doing a listener requested um case story episode whatever okay come get so me or summy summy gave us a review five stars said we were amazing and asked for the cumbria shootings which i had never heard of no me neither but i feel like i sh- definitely should have uh-huh yeah like it's actually quite it's like quite sad i was like whenever i was working on it I'm like a little bit hormonal. I think I'm getting my period and I was like getting quite teary eyed. It's just like the carnage is. <gasps> oh no. So, did When you looked mm, into it, mm-hmm. did you realize you knew about it or were you still? I didn't know about it. Okay. I, I must not no. know about it either then. Okay. No, I don't think you, you would. Even though like it wasn't that long ago. Okay. Derek Bird was a 52 year old. It's always so hard to start. Yeah. He had, uh, and he had been a taxi driver for about 23 years. Uh, he had lived in Whitehaven in the Cumbria area all of his life and was known by many in the area as Birdie. Derek Bird. Birdie. Cute name. He no, was... I do not know if this guy's the perpetrator, but that's a cute name. Yes, he is. <laughs> oh, no. Derek was divorced, a father of two grown sons, and had just recently became a grandfather only like a few weeks before this day oh god that we're going to talk about settle down granddad you'd be like, geez like come on you think you'd be would you not be and... full of joy and right okay if this guy is a shooter though like they they usually have like some kind of psychotic like problem or at least depression or rage issues yeah. yeah although he had a family as well as his own mother and siblings who were alive he rarely ever spoke of his family just never brought them up in conversation with his mates um, but it does seem that he kept himself quite busy. Derek was a fan of motorsports and scuba diving. Mm-hmm. Derek would spend most of his free time tinkering with his car, as well as he loved to travel to Thailand every year with his friends. Mm-hmm. What was he doing out there? Oh, <laughs> what do you think? Oh, Jesus. Derek God. obtained a shotgun license in 1995 and a fi- firearms license for a rifle in 2007 okay what do you think the reasons see, are given to obtain a license i mean like i i know people uh-huh. who work on farms they need the guns yes. but like what would his reason yes. be i wonder so apparently you can get it if you're like part of like a club oh. like a gun club we're like hunting like, or? like so and hunt and hunters as well oh. yeah hunting there is no need to hunt anymore. and then clay pigeon shooting is also quite popular is that where you shoot the little disc i uh, okay. the clay, clay i don't mind that thing. but i don't no. think there's a need to hunt really uh the foxes and yeah, stuff yes I just, i'm totally against just, that yeah i just don't like that i know it's tradition and people are trying to defend it but i just it just seems cruel you know it is yeah. it is cruel yeah. now Derek got in a spot of trouble in 1990 when he was dismissed and convicted from his job as a joiner at the nuclear power plant for stealing. What did he steal? So, like, it never said what he stole, but I'm thinking if he's, like, a joiner, he might have been, like, saving some metal. Okay. You know the way, like, sometimes, like, 
builders that are, are like carpenters like they'll not use all yeah, of the cement or they'll not use all be worth a bit of money but yeah. sure that's that's technically stealing oh yeah 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 technically mm-hmm. i mean like oh you'd have to be really i mean a nuclear power plant but that's what i i get the assumption that's what it was because he got only got a 12 month suspended sentence and nothing really happened and apparently this this sentence does not prohibit you from getting a gun license. Okay, jeez. So, uh, I'm pretty sure he became a taxi man shortly after this, and then he continued to be a taxi man for the next 20 odd years. Wow, so he must have liked it all, right? I don't think it's the worst job. No, You're there's a good a lot, bit though. of freedom in it. You can pick your mm, own there is, stuff. There is. Pop in and do the grocery shop. Yeah, it's a handy job. Family, neighbours and work colleagues described Derek as... Quiet, popular, a laugh, kind of like a normal bloke, like a real nice man. And he sounds to me like a typical taxi man. Mm-hmm. You know, taxi men are like just surface, very chatty, chatty friendly. Yeah, very pleasant. Yeah. 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 I mean, people mm-hmm. become, like, get to know them. They're familiar. They have their local regular customers. Yeah. And, yeah. Derek would often be spotted about the town. Obviously, as well being a taxi man, he's going to be around the town all mm-hmm. the time he knows it like the back of his mm-hmm. hand he would be standing at the taxi rank with the other driver drivers having the crack and banter he was also a regular at the local pub having a few pints and chatting with his friends or even he would just sit on the front doorstep and have a cup of tea mm-hmm. however some neighbors had remarked that on that wednesday morning the 2nd of june 2010 he had been looking through people and had not been his usual friendly self Mm. at some time in the early hours Derek leaves his home and drives about three miles to his twin brother's house David to his to his twin brother's David brother twin brother's brother David's house he drives twin brother David's house David's the the S is on David right yeah to his twin brother David's house right David's people are not gonna care (laughs) <laughs> to his twin brother David's house there Derek takes out his gun and shoots him 11 times in the head and body killing him dear god wait his own brother mm. mm-hmm. what? his twin brother mm-hmm. twin brother Dead. 11 11 sorry I clearly was not focused enough <laughs> I'm like twin <laughs> brother 11 oh my god what oh my um, god it is wait did he did the did no. the, 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 the did they have any type of words before that happened? Like, or did he just yeah. walk in and just... I'm I'm glad you asked. Okay. Now, it is speculated that the brothers had been recently rowing over a will, like the parents' inheritance or the family inheritance. Oh, no, it's always a will. Um, although this has been denied by the, by the family. There is also, like, it is also thought that Derek... Derek thought his twin was conspiring with the family lawyer, Kevin Commons, to have Derek arrested over tax issues. Hmm. So Derek's getting a little bit like paranoid yeah. that the brother is going after his inheritance and that they're going to try and like put Derek away so he can't claim their inheritance. Okay. So some people think that this is the motive for killing his brother, but also for what he is about to do next. At 5.14 a.m., like, crack of dawn, Derek is captured on CCTV footage. He drives to the farmhouse of the family lawyer Kevin Commons. Various people report seeing Derek waiting outside the house for over four hours. Just sitting in the car? Yeah, he was sitting in the car for four hours outside the lawyer's house. Waiting for the lawyer to get up or... Mm-hmm. At te- yeah, he's waiting for the lawyer to like but wake up, I why think. Why did he get there so early? I don't Just know. in case he missed him? I don't know. I suppose he'll definitely not miss him. Yeah, okay. At 10.13am, Cumbria Police received the first call reporting gunshots in the farmhouse. Oh God. Derek had went there to shoot the lawyer and while trying to escape, the 60-year-old lawyer, Kevin Commons, jumped in his car drove down the lane only to find that Derek had blocked his driveway with his car. As Derek walks toward him with his shotgun, he fires twice at Kevin, 
hitting him once in the shoulder. The neighbour, who I assume called the police, seen the whole thing. He <gasps> saw Kevin staggering up his driveway away from another man, who was Derek, oh but she didn't know that. Oh my God. Armed police officers drive as fast as they can, but the farmhouse is in the middle of the countryside. By the time they arrive, Kevin Commons is dead in his driveway. Oh, did he? He was shot in the head. Ooh, okay. You were going to ask, did he bleed to death? Well, I was just going to ask, what was the field shot? Because he got, he got it in the shoulder, which was fine, but I was wondering yeah. where. The rest of the story happens between 10.30am and 11.35am. It all happens in quick succession. Yeah. Derek, armed with a sawn-off shotgun and a .22 rifle, drives to the home of his neighbour, Neil Jax, 52, to collect another gun he had left there. But, thankfully, Neil was out. Neil's wife apologises and says she doesn't have the key to unlock the gun cabinet and offers oh Derek a cup of tea. She's like, you want to come in for a cup of tea? Oh my God, he's just murdered a man. Two. I know, that's so scary. That poor woman doesn't even know. Derek says no thanks and he speeds off in his car. Ugh. At 10.33, three minutes later, a second 999 call made to police reporting gunshots fired in Duke Street where the taxi rank is. <gasps> where Derek would chat with his friends and colleagues. Taxi driver Darren Rucastle dies after being shot at a point blank range what? between the eyes. Why is he killing his, his like colleagues okay. and friends? What? Yeah, he went to the taxi rank where he knew his mates where they stood having the banter, where he stood and opened fire. What? This makes no sense. Mm-hmm. Cumbria police deploy every armed officer in the county in response to these shootings. They're like, we have to get him. What the fuck's going yeah, on? because he's not going to stop. He's just going to keep going. Mm-hmm. Derek then hunts down and shoots the other taxi drivers. What? I Dawn don't Reed. get this. I know, it's insane. Could you imagine? Okay, he's been a taxi man for 23 years. I know a lot of taxi yep. men do stay mm. in the profession that length of time. So some of those fellas could have been, like, known him for years. Oh, yeah. Like, decades. Like, that's so mental. Uh-huh. Oh, my God. Don Reid, Paul Wilson, and Terry Kennedy. He shoots them all, but thankfully they all survive. Oh, God. But he killed mm-hmm. one of them. One, he, yes, the st- but the but ones at the, stock, up the street. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It later comes out that Derek had actually complained to the taxi company about the taxi man at the rank winding him up. Ah, jeekers. Mm-hmm. They're probably just teasing or something. That's what I. That's exactly what I was thinking. Like, men can be harsh, and I do think that hopefully... I think that has been settling down over the years. When what year was this? Two thousand and ten. Okay. Yeah. I mean, look, men are probably always going to slag each other. Let's be real. Yeah. I mean, that's it's really hard do. to know. Like, are you slagging the cycle? <laughs> How do you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, like, I wrote down. It seems like he just did not enjoy the banter. Okay. Like, he couldn't take a joke. You and said it's at like, the like if you don't. Sorry, go on. I was. I'm just thinking. If you don't like the banter. And you can't stand these people. Don't stand with them. Just walk away. You don't need... Yeah, he don't says engage. that you need to talk to them. Yeah. You said at the beginning that he was he was described as quiet. Yeah. At the taxi cab company, Derek had threatened the men just a few days before June the 2nd, saying they are going to get it big style. What? Mm. Big style? Mm-hmm. Big style. LOL. He's cool, dude. Big style. Is is birdie. I mean, your her mind would definitely <laughs> not go to like a shooting. Definitely not. Like, sounds like a bloody prank or something that he's going. It to sounds do. like he's just going to like embarrass them yeah. in the pub or something. Yeah, you know, Oof. call them out in their shit. Taxi man Paul Wilson, who got shot in the face and lived, said that he thought it was a prank, like. The taxi men didn't even know that Derek despised them. They didn't even know they thought he was joking around. Yeah. Paul put his hand up to his face and then he pulled down his hand and there was blood. And that's when he realised it wasn't a prank. Oh my God. Like he got shot in like the head. Jesus. I know he probably thought it was like a BB gun or something. or Yeah. Or like a blank or something. Yeah. Terry Kennedy, in self-defence, put his hand up to his face. Derek fired, mutilating his hand. No. 
He later had to have the hand amputated. Oh, bless. Well, it might have saved his life, though. Oh, yes. He could have had it in the face, yeah. The last driver who survived, Don Reid, said that he dived like Superman away from the gun and ended up being shot in the back. Oh. Don crawled away as Derek walked towards him with his gun <gasps> raised. But instead, he turns round and gets back in his car and drives away. Instead of, like, finishing them off. Yeah. So, to me, it seems like he knew how long he could be there for before the cops would get there. Oh, right, okay. A nearby police officer hears the gunshots (gasps) fired and sees a a grey taxi drive off with a shotgun pointing out of the front passenger window. (laughs) Yeah. So, he's in a fucking movie. What an idiot. Obviously, they don't know that it's Derek. I know. But could you imagine seeing that? A gun out of a window? Oh, my God. Mm-hmm. It's mental. So the officer goes into, like, a movie cop mode. He sends out an alert to the station, then commandeers a car off a local man. Wow. So I need this car. And he speeds off after Derek's uh, grey taxi. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. It's like... It's like in the movies and you, like pull the yeah, guy out of the car. Could you imagine the adrenaline? <laughs> like it would feel so <gasps> surreal. Well, maybe they oh, do it all the time. Crazy. Well, no, this doesn't happen all the time. No, it doesn't happen all no. the time. Thank God. The officer can see the gunman in the grey taxi slow down. So he's following them. As he passes the other taxi traveling in the opposite direction. You know the ta- taxi men when they're like slowing down, like they talk to each other, slow yeah, down. They do. Going the oh, hey. How's it going? Mind the road out yes. there. There's road works yes. here. Like, like they always do that. They do. Which is so cute. It's a good thing that um, the ta- it's actually a good thing that the police is in an unmarked vehicle. This is great. This is true. Well, no, nah, not for lo- much longer. Oh no. Uh, uh, <laughs> oh God, no. Yeah. So as the taxi taxis are slowing down to like to chat and they put they roll their windows down. Derek takes out a shotgun and fires directly into the passing taxi window. Oh god. Shoots the taxi man and also the passenger who's in the back seat. What? Mm-hmm. Oh, this is so mental. The officer who is following obviously has to stop. He administers first aid to the injured taxi man and the female passenger who's also shot. Like you have to if somebody's been shot, you have to stop. You can't just keep chasing. Uh-huh. Like it isn't a movie, you have to administer first aid. I know. Yeah. But thankfully, by then, two other officers in a police van quickly take over the pursuit. Derek is now aware of the police, so he pulls into a nearby driveway. He turns around and points the gun at the unarmed officers. The police officers have nowhere to go as they can't reverse because the traffic is behind them, stopping them. Derek floors it and gets away again. Wow. The officers, they follow in the van in an unsuccessful hide speed high speed chase unfortunately the van they were in was far too heavy and big to like chase after Derek who is like a ex- well experienced driver and his know, nippy little yeah. um, and so they sort of like lose him Derek is now driving at full speed through the town and just randomly firing at will outside the car window as he goes stop mm-hmm. did he hit anyone isn't or? <sighs> it's mental Therese I can't believe this happened. Did he hit anyone? Well, we're about to get into it. Oh, okay, okay. (laughs) RAF helicopters were drafted in to help the police and they started a massive land and air search. Public radio and television warnings were issued to people telling them to stay inside and to be aware of the developing situation. Oh, it's so scary, could you imagine? Mm -hmm. Now, all of that just happened in like half an hour. Yeah. He's been in the town Mm -hmm. and it's 11 a.m. now. At around 11am, a neighbour finds Derek's brother, David. They find his body is slumped on the floor of his blood-stained bedroom. Oh, God. Derek continues his drive-by shooting mass murder spree at random. As he's randomly driving around and shooting, he shoots and kills Kenneth Fishburne, 71, Susan Hughes, 57, both who were just going about their day. Oh my they were just, god, that's just yeah. so awful. I believe Susan was just walking, she was just like walking through the town with her groceries. Just, oh my god. Yeah. Derek has now drove to a nearby village where he blasts the car horn outside the home of Jason Carey. 
Jason Carey was a member of the diving club where Derek had fallen out with the committee members. So he's got a beef with the diving club mm-hmm. as well. By the time Jason Carey's wife goes to answer the door, Derek has just driven off. Oh, so at the so bottom, they're, uh, they were okay. They were okay. Oh. But at the bottom of Jason Carey's drive, as he's leaving the house, Derek shoots and kills a little retired couple. Sorry, what? Jennifer, 68, and James, 67, Jackson. This guy is just, this guy's pure evil. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. What? He shoots Could Jennifer you once. Imagine with his... the guilt of the diving man because. Yeah, because you know he I mean? was there. It's not his fault, but mm-hmm. I'd say he does have guilt over that. Oh, that's horrible. Yeah, it's like survivor guilt or Yeah, exactly. Like, the, mm-hmm. he wouldn't have been there otherwise. And it's just, mm-hmm. it's mm-hmm. the worst thing about these types of shooting. It's the randomness. The lady uh-huh. just going in for her groceries, the old, the elderly couple. I mean, mm-hmm. it's just, oh, it's horrible. Yeah, the randomness. Yeah. yeah. He shoots Jennifer once with a shotgun and twice with his rifle. He shoots James once, killing him instantly. He drives off and continues his shooting spree. He kills Isaac Dixon, 65, while he was outside talking with a local farmer. What on earth? He also shoots Gary Purdom, 31. Uh, He was working in a field. Oh my God. I believe he was also like a local rugby player. Derek shoots at an estate agent, Jamie Clark, who is only 23. As Jamie is driving, the attack caused Jamie to crash his car and the autopsy uh, wasn't able to decide if it was the bullet or the car wreck that killed Jamie. Yeah. It's just like, how has this gone from being, you know, uh, he's nervous about the will, he takes out his brother, then it Mm -hmm. becomes petty with like his work colleagues and now it's just Mm -hmm. like anyone it's just so bizarre how that escalated Mm -hmm. yeah it sounds like so much rage really over what i mean not that this can ever be justified life is so hard he just became a grandfather it's like you have Mm -hmm. so much like Mm -hmm. what are you doing yeah he's got like a job he's got friends Mm -hmm. he's got kids and grandkids now he goes to thailand every year he's got multiple hobbies like and you know i don't think the brothers is going to be able to take all of the will like and by the way you're in a will you're getting something some people have nothing just the selfishness and just oh so while he's still driving i think through the countryside at this point Derek drives past a motorist, Harry Berger, 40, who reverses uh, to allow Derek to get through a tunnel that was going under a bridge. You know, the way, like, they can only fit one car Mm -hmm. and you have to, like, let one person go. Mm -hmm. Good manners. Mm -hmm. So as Derek is leaving the bridge, he just leans over and shoots into Harry's window. Stop it. Mm -hmm. Stop it. Harry put up his hand in defense and survives, (gasps) thankfully. Yeah, he only lost two fingers. So a lot of these people are surviving by putting up their hands. So this is a good thing to do. I'm going to remember that. But I think it's because it's a shotgun. Like a shotgun sends out loads of pellets. It's not like a bullet. I hate that about shotguns. It's so gross. It's very scary. Yeah. (sighs) Derek's last two victims are shot within a few seconds of each other. On the same street. Michael Pike, 64 is killed while cycling. A witness seen Derek's car bump into Michael's bicycle's back wheel. Then the witness heard two very loud popping sounds and she looked over and seen Mr. Pike was slumped against the wall. Only a few seconds later up the road, Jane Robinson, 66, is out delivering home shopping catalogues. She is also shot at point blank range. Um, so a lot of the time how he got people like the close range like point blank like right in the head he would like ask people to like come over like ask them the time so they would what? walk over to the car mm-hmm. oh my god mm-hmm. don't ever tell people the time don't ever go over to people that's the creepiest thing right so sick at 11.33 a.m. armed officers in an armed response vehicle Radio in details. They see Derek driving around the bend at 60 miles per hour, going in their opposite direction. 
The police officer slams on the brakes, they spin around and they follow the gunman. The chase is short-lived though, as they end up having to stop at Roadworks and Derek disappears. Ugh. They, he keeps slipping through their fingers. Yeah. Later, at inquest, police officers said that communications between police were difficult because the radio airwaves kept jamming. Oh no. And they were unable to respond immediately at the initial sighting. Oh no. Only a minute after reporting the sighting of the grey taxi, officers report losing it again. Oh god. Derek continues to drive around the countryside where he opens fire on six more random targets, injuring three people. Derek pulls up near a 30-year-old tourist, Samantha Christie, and asks her if she's having a nice day, <gasps> then shoots her in the face. Stop. Mm-hmm. All right. In an interview later, Samantha said, I must have fallen on my side because I can remember thinking, lie still, he will think I am dead <gasps> and he won't come back to shoot me, lie oh, still. Oh, that just gave me goosebumps that she actually, like, that went through her mind. What a smart lady. Oh, yeah. Oh my god. So the rampage is starting to wind down now. Derek pulls over as he is almost completely out of petrol. He has used all of his shotgun rounds and he is somehow missing a front wheel in his car. What? <laughs> Sorry, I, I don't know. Rap. That's I know, it's so I that's a... driving. <laughs> Whenever I read it, I was like oh. Wait, what? How like... can can cars go without Front wheel. I didn't know you could have three wheels. What? <laughs> he what? He just why is he not toppled over? Would it just be on the metal bit or I don't know? Yeah, it would topple. He must have been driving like a fucking maniac for yeah. a wheel to come. A whole wheel came We're, flying. Yeah, off. sure. He bumped into a cyclist. I wonder what is that when he did it. Lee Turner, who was also on holiday in the area with his wife and their two young sons. He sees Derek has pulled over and is having a spot of car problems. <laughs> <laughs> this in a fucking wheel. Uh, and he offers to help Derek, like, change his wheel and put on the new one. No, never offer. But Derek mumbles, no, go. I'm wondering at this point, is Derek not, like, covered in blood splatter? Spatter he must be, whatever. right? Like, he must he, be. he's been in close range of these people when he pops them all Shoots like them. he'd, he'd mm-hmm. be a mess and he'd be all sweaty mm-hmm. and like disheveled mm-hmm. and yeah it's june as well it's warm yeah he'd be he'd be a mm-hmm. mess i would not approach this man crazy at twelve thirty, derek is seen alive for the last time by an eyewitness remember they still don't know that it's him they don't know who's driving this gray taxi yeah that's yeah, frightening. But wait Police a minute. Find, is his yeah. is is his name not linked to the taxi registration? I don't think so. All right, okay. They find out. They must maybe that's do how you, they did it. Do you remember the law that came in? It wasn't that long ago. Uh mm. no, it was probably a few years, but it's still recent enough. Do you remember it, where, where it was like they had to have this official plate on their taxis? Do you remember that? I think so. Yeah. I wonder if this got anything to do with this. I don't know. Maybe. Mm. Yeah, because the the just random people were giving people random people were saying I'm a taxi, taxi. <laughs> yeah. I'm a taxi. Yeah. And around half twelve, police find the grey taxi abandoned in the countryside, and there is one gun left inside. So they realise that Derek is now on foot with a rifle. Oh god, freaking out! Ten minutes later, after they find the car, I think they were able to put it together when they were inside the car. Police officially name the gunman. And it goes out over the radio and the TV and stuff. That we were looking for Derek Bird, 52. And they issued a photograph of him as well for the TV, Mm -hmm. for the news. An hour later, at about half one, Derek is found dead in a nearby wooded area. He shot himself in the head. Dear God. That day, Derek had killed 12 people and severely injured 11. Yeah, even if you're not severely injured mm-hmm. you're, you're traumatized for the rest of your life mm-hmm. most likely when the news came out that the mass killer was Derek Bird it seemed the whole town was flummoxed they were like right. what mm. huh I know so many people would have known him like right yeah. the taxi man everybody knows him uh-huh. it seemed that none of his friends or family were aware that he had such evil buried inside him wow 
and like no record of kind of like like poor mental health or like you know yeah that's what I was about to say next like the police they also said it was impossible to, to predict yeah. he never had been arrested because of like violence yeah. he had never like got into fist fights yeah. no like no mental health Ill- illnesses. Yeah, he just wasn't not on like anyone's that. radar. Like, that's yeah. so scary. Mm-hmm. Oh. Derek's poor mother was in such a state of shock learning oh the God. news that he had killed his twin brother <gasps> and 11 others. Could you imagine that's your child? Like, what? Mm-hmm. That poor woman. Derek's friend told reporters that Derek was an outgoing, well-known guy who everyone liked. But looking back in hindsight... The last time that they spoke, Derek did say to him, you won't see me again. Sorry, who said this? He said that to Derek said that to his his friend. To his friend? You won't see me again. Mm. He was planning it. That's... He knew it wasn't like a snap. He didn't snap and go kill everyone. Uh Oh, he's obviously a bit of a psycho, like. But the fact that he kept that hidden for so many years, 23 years... As a mm. taxi driver, probably working in the same company. Mm-hmm. Like, how do you keep that under wraps? That you're, mm-hmm. I don't know. That you're a psycho. Yeah. Uh, a lot of the people who knew Derek said that they didn't even know that he owned a gun right. or multiple guns. Right. Or that he was a member of a gun club. They had never even seen him with a gun. Yeah. Everybody agreed that it was totally unpredictable. Wow. In all, there were 30 different crime scenes investigated. Oh, God. Oh. I was going to, yeah, that's, yeah. It, he just, mm-hmm. it was because he had the car that it was just got so uh-huh. far. And police confirmed that it was the worst incident of mass shooting in Britain since the Dublin massacre in 1996. I don't think I'm familiar with that massacre. Which we have not done. That's the one in Scotland that we'll have to cover. Okay, okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, these shootings, they're not common in Britain. They're not. UK. They're not. No, they're not. No. Thankfully. Yeah. So it just makes them all the more shocking. Shocking? Yeah. When it happens, yeah. Mm. I mean, like, yeah. how long ago did he get his bloody gun license? It seemed like it was a long time ago. In the 90s. So, like, do you just get your license and then that's just it? They never check in with you again? I think so. You, but, like, your, your, your mental health could deteriorate within that time. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's not... Yeah. He may not have been who he was now than when he was back then. I'm not too sure. And is he even using it? It's these people don't question. They give you license and then they ask, you know, are you still hunting? Do you still need this license? Like, what is the reason yeah. for him to have a gun anymore? Like, I'm sure you have to renew your gun license every year. No? Well, I hope you do. But, like, do they vet whenever they renew? Like, do this is a... Do they give, like, a questionnaire about, like, mental health? I know that would be super easy to pass, but, like... Are you crazy? (laughs) No! (laughs) But, like, I don't know. I just wish there was some way of vetting a little bit more. Mm. You know what I mean? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know much about it either. Notable royalty have visited West Cumbria, and there was a memorial fund set up to help the victims and affected family and communities. And, yeah, basically... That's it. Dude. I feel bad for his family who have to live with that shame, you know? Oh, yeah. that's That stays with... That'll mm. be well known in that place for a long, long time. Mm-hmm. So sad. And all over nothing, really. Yeah. Nothing that couldn't have it, been Like, he didn't leave a suicide note or anything. There's nothing. Can't believe I didn't know about that. I know. It's quite a shocking one, isn't it's it? I got a little bit teary whenever I was writing it. Yeah. It's like just the chaos. So much loss of life, yeah. I mean, every single one of those people have a family, have a child, have Mm -hmm. a mother. You know, like that, Mm -hmm. the amount of people affected is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Just, and then at the end, you know, he takes his life and doesn't really have to deal with the consequences of any of it. There's no justice. Yeah, it's just a horrible feeling at the end. But a good recommendation though, so thank you for recommending that. Oh yes, yes. And with Thank apologies, you. I cannot remember the handle name. So yeah, keep them coming, and we'll cover them. If you want a specific case, leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. Mention how great we are. Obviously. <laughs> and then say, and also, could you please cover X Y Z murder? Thank you. Or crime. 
doesn't have to be murder. Yeah, maybe let's go for a light one. <laughs> Mix it up. <laughs> I don't know. We always get really dark ones. And yeah, we have another listener request as well that I have to start working on soon. What's that? There's another one coming. Oh, it's another okay, heavy okay, one has been asked for. Anyway, so let's end it. We'll see you on the next one, guys. Slana Walia. Bye bye. You nearly forgot to say Slana Walia. I did. I very, very nearly did. I never. I've told. I think I've told this story. I'm not sure if I've told on the podcast, but I remember being very young, very drunk, mm-hmm. and coming to in the back of a taxi mm-hmm. and being driven home and mm-hmm. the taxi man knew my name but oh. I did not know him I thought you were going to say I didn't know my name no. <laughs> probably. That's why drunk. <laughs> probably I remember waking up and like <laughs> he was like Trez I'm bringing you home Trez and I was like I do not know this man I do not know <laughs> this man and I was freaking out like, oh God. you know when you're drunk, you get a little bit paranoid. And I was like, yeah. this guy is taking me somewhere. Who put me in yeah. this taxi? And I was, it was the worst feeling. But he brought me home. And the next day I found out that the, the lady that I worked with, it was her husband or her husband's a taxi driver. And he, he knew my name because, you know, she talks about me at work. Yeah. But I didn't know him. I was, he was a complete stranger. It was the scariest <laughs> thing. Anyway. And then, and then I remember the law about like the registrations coming in and being like, yeah, that's really important. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, he was so sweet that he took me. It was really far that he took me as well. So anyway, yeah. Me Time and Murder would like to thank and acknowledge our sources that make this podcast possible. References can be found on our Instagram page.